waiting for it. Off, yeah. off the cuff segues, not <clears throat> my strong point, but well, I think it. thirty thousand people would disagree with that oh, strongly. Well done. Congratulations, <laughs> and to your two thousand new listeners, can I yes, just say great. sorry in advance? But I'm only here once a month. Okay, so listen, listen, we'll talk about that off yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we might have to renegotiate your contract. Yeah. No, I'm only no. joking. Wouldn't be the same without you. Wouldn't be the same without you. Um, plenty coming up, Collie, uh, in uh, the world of cinema over the next uh, few months. We're coming into Christmas season, which is sort of uh, another block. It's not quite summer blockbuster season, but it's the next best thing. Yeah, and, and of course, we get a lot of classics re-released. And of course, there's lots of groups, you know, have Christmas parties or schools, you know, Christmas school tours. So there's kind of a long run up to the Christmas period. So it's stuff that they're really hoping people... M- the general public will go to over the school holidays. Mm. Kind of opens up a little bit earlier. So we've a couple of blockbusters and a few really big movies coming up. But the one I'm really excited to talk about <clears throat> is the Marvels. Now, before everyone turns off straight away and goes, <laughs> you know, it's the 33rd Marvel Universe movie. Every- what? Yes, yes, I know. Um, and that's not even counting okay. the TV shows. Um, you know, so when a- you say the 33rd Marvel From Universe. Iron Man? All the way right, Avengers, so all of those so you're movies. You're talking the late 2000s, yep, so, yep. and we're not even going from Avengers, we're going from Iron Man. Ar- going from Iron Man. 2010, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. So even that's earlier, a, maybe. That's yeah. a lot of movies in a, it in, is, a, yeah. in a short period of time. And there has certainly been a bit of fatigue, Rory. There's certainly mm. been a bit of, uh, yeah, and uh, because there's loads of other superhero movies as well. Yeah. And then, I don't know if you've, because uh, I know you've a big interest in the sort of Hollywood side of, of movies and stuff. Yeah. There's a load of articles, a big one in Variety going, oh, you know, worst movie ever, the doom and gloom, all this sort of stuff. And that's what I'd heard before I went okay. in to sit and watch the Marvels on th- on Thursday morning, right? And I was sitting there, and I'm sure you've got this, because, you know, you have you like quick cult TV shows and, and music mm-hmm. as well, where you go, am I watching the wrong thing? I don't understand this. This is a delightful movie. It's really funny and charming, and I'm having so much crack. Maybe the end, maybe the end is awful, and mm-hmm. that's what everyone... First of all, what all movie reviewers love, it's an hour and a half long. Fantastic. Get in, give me a good time and get out. That's all all you need. Second, if anyone has seen the TV show Miss Marvel, one of the characters from that is in it and she is the star of the show. She's only 17 or 18, a young um, Indian American girl and she is just funny and charming. What it is is... You know the way some of the Marvel movies before they made like Spider Man was kind of high school movie but superheroes. Mm-hmm, then yeah. Deadpool was kind of the rude American Pie movie but superheroes. All mm-hmm. the, Black Panther was the you know the African American experience. This is Freaky Friday, the superhero movie, and it's all the better for it. It is probably the first one really aimed at probably more ten to fourteen year old girls. And I warm and fi- fuzzy bubble gum. Bro- Absolutely, yeah, and, and okay. friendship bracelets and for best friends forever, but also having fun with that. And even as a 50-year-old man, I was going, I am here for this, because I haven't seen this one before. It was really funny, it was silly, it was a pop song. It was a three-minute pop song, Rory, is what it was. It, it was okay. great fun. It's not trying to change the world, it's trying to entertain you. Is it maybe going back to uh, you know a time where a superhero movie didn't take itself too seriously, one. had a lot of fun, and a lot of the a lot of the, the DCs and, and the Marvels and all from the from the mid two thousand onwards, were always felt the need to be dark, gritty, <sighs> yeah, you know, and um, like I've got Killers of the Flower Moon for that. I don't necessarily yeah. need a superhero. It's good sometimes. The, the, there was a movie called Logan that I thought did that brilliantly, yeah. but I don't need them all to that, and I don't need a four hour cut of Justice League. Now, some people do, and fine, and you have that, but don't slag off well, the Well, the standard other... cut was bad enough. Yeah, so. yeah, well, that's <laughs> it. But <laughs> they will be the people giving out about this, and the fact yeah. that it morphs into, there's a whole Disney princess scene that had me roaring, laughing out loud, because they're having a bit of fun. They're winking at the audience, but those fanboys will be really annoyed at that scene, okay. the, the four-hour Justice League people. And, you know, fine, go watch the Justice League again and leave this. Like, I, I honestly think if, I don't know if your daughter likes uh, superhero movies, but if she doesn't, this We're is the there. This, is, there. this is the one for her. Okay. This is the one to introduce her. Maybe the TV show first on Disney Plus and mm. then this. This but is the one I think she'll really enjoy. Give, give us a, a very brief synopsis of the plot. That's a great, great idea. I realize <laughs> I haven't mentioned it at all. This is why 30,000 people turn into, tune into him. All right. So, yeah, enough. I know. I promise that's the last time. So... Miss Marvel has found this magic bracelet. Basically, it's one of those stories. And that she did a whole TV series about her. But she knows it's linked to something else. 
all of a sudden it seems that it's linked to Captain Marvel who we've seen in the Avengers and so on mm. their superpowers and every time they use their superpowers they switch Freaky Friday style which makes okay. it really funny and a laugh Samuel L. Jackson is in this one a lot and he gets to be funny he doesn't have to be tough he doesn't mm. have to be hard and he's really funny in it as well and basically it's a bo- they keep on swapping places and of course Captain Marvel who's this one of the most powerful superheroes of all time but not mm. great with people is suddenly find herself swapped with the Indian American family going what have you done with my daughter and also would you like to, are you interested in uh, some tax uh, exemption rules and all this sort of stuff <laughs> right, and, okay. it's, it's light hearted comedy as I said Freaky Friday the superhero movie even though it's not just yeah. that the plot doesn't really matter it's an excuse for the three women in it the three main women in it to be funny together and it works is it too heavily grounded in the Marvel universe is it a case that you know if you haven't been a big fan of what's come before in the Marvel Universe that you're going to be to- totally lost or is it a good jumping on point? There's I know a, I ask you this yeah, about every yeah, yeah, Marvel yeah, but Though movie. I think there's a few plot points that you won't get, but they're just going, it doesn't matter. Just get the jokes. Yeah. Get the jokes about she's 16 and she meets her all-time hero okay. and she suddenly goes up and wants to be best friends or, and her hero's looking and go, who is this strange girl and why are you hugging me? It's that okay. comedy. The plot doesn't matter. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. I know Marvel won't like that, but it's true. It's really good fun and it's loads of negative reviews, but it is noticeable. And I know it's two men yeah. saying this, but it is noticeable. All the L fellas, oh, it's stupid. It's worst movie ever. Loads of women going, I thought it was really funny and lighthearted. There okay. you go. So, well, so that's in theatres now, right, right now and it'll be there for, I'd say, quite uh, some time. It'll be there for, I hope it does better, better than people have expected because it's worth it. It's fun and funny. Okay. So that is uh, the Marvels that is in theatres now. We're going to go for a quick commercial break. We're going to talk the return of the Hunger Games after this. Don't go anywhere. An exciting... minutes to midday. Colleen McFadden is with me in the studio. We are talking all things movies in the run-up to a Christmas blockbuster season and plenty uh, to talk about. The Hunger Games is back. Yes, and loads to talk about. And please remind me, do the wave up sign because I talked way too much about the Marvels already, didn't I? <laughs> so, the, uh, the Hunger Games is back. This is a prequel. I'm really curious to see how this does. I, now, mm. it opens next week. I haven't seen it yet. And this is the story of how President Snow... Uh, got to power okay. and how he got involved and how he corrupt got corrupted because the whole point of Hunger Games really was power corrupts no matter who you are yeah. and which is why I thought that I thought that the previous movies were great actually it's one of the few examples I thought the third movie I know I know they split it into two three and four was actually better than the the third book which is unusual for the yeah. movie <clears throat> I thought they really explained how you know, corruption and um, wealth leads to this sort of opulence. And off, and it was such a brilliant series and people have loved it so much. Whether they love a, a sequel or a prequel 10 years later, we kind of have to wait and see. Yeah. I'm already ready, that, though. I loved the madness of the fashion and to show the difference between the wealthy and those who aren't wealthy. And it'd be interesting to see if there's still an audience, especially without Jennifer Lawrence's part, because she was brilliant in that. She was. Yeah. She, she was the standout. Yeah. That was a real a, a breakout yeah. role for her. Is there... You can't give too much away. Is there a, is there a cameo? I, well, I don't think so, because it's set, set too early. But I bet you... I bet you we meet one of our relations yeah. or something like yeah. that. I'm pretty sure there's okay. sort of a linear way. And some of the other characters, maybe Woody Harrelson's character, whose name escapes me at the moment, I'm sure some of those will turn up. Although, it's a nice segue because, of course... Part of the fashion was, you know, uh, the idea was like the French Revolution when Marie Antoinette was, you know, she didn't mm. say let them eat cake, but that sort of idea. And of course, Napoleon is coming out too. Mm, yeah. uh, the following week, which is, you know, just after that time. Yeah. And it's probably our big serious adult movie this this month. So Joaquin Phoenix uh, is playing Napoleon, teaming up with uh, Ridley Scott again, who gave us Gladiator. Mm. And that's the way they're selling that and pushing this movie. <clears throat> that it's, a, you know, a return to form of, of that sort of form for Ridley Scott, making these big historical epics. I'm really curious to see it. There's already a lot of talk about Oscars. And like we've had Killers of the Flower Moon, which I thought was brilliant, long but brilliant. Yeah. And Oppenheimer, long but brilliant. Mm. And now Napoleon. And each month or every couple of months I'm going, oh, well, that's obviously the Oscar winner. And then you go, oh, 
maybe not. Yeah. So I'm really curious to see that one. And in a sea of, I know I'm going to talk about one more kids movie before we go, but in a sea of kids movies and Christmas movies, that's a really interesting, that and there's a movie called Saltburn with Barry Keown, which is a real weird Brideshead revisited yes, sort of yeah, movie. Yeah. Again, haven't seen it yet, so I don't know, but with two interesting grown-up movies uh, in mm. in the sea of, of, of Christmas Fest. So, yeah, and it's, so, it's great to see because there, there literally is something, there really is something for, for everyone. 100%. Uh, yeah. the next couple of months yeah you know so right so that's the hunger the hunger games um full title the hunger games the ballad of songbirds and snakes we're all gonna call it the hunger games one aren't we yeah, yeah. exactly the hunger games prequel yeah. uh that's in theaters now and, next week uh, next next friday oh okay okay oh, oh so it's, it's in theaters stateside now yeah. but it's next week here okay and uh napoleon hits theaters the following week Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, directed by Ridley Scott. So you reckon an Oscar contender possibly? I, I think so. Well, yeah. I think anytime you've got those people in there, and Vanessa Kirby, who was so good in The Crown and is really becoming a star in her own right, yeah. she plays uh, Josephine. Although, of course, Josephine was way older than Napoleon in real life. She's mm. like 15 years younger than Joaquin Phoenix because it's Hollywood. And what do you expect? But it looks really interesting, okay. and they're they're. Pu- big push you always know by the amount of posters you get sent in the cinema how much they're, <laughs> how serious they're, they're taking this they think this one's good okay okay so we'll keep that's one to watch yep. then we'll definitely keep an eye on that alright uh, Disney are still churning them out Disney are still churning them out and you know hopefully they're a bit back to form uh, as well because uh, the I thought the Pixar movies, last Pixar movie, Elemental, was very good. Mm. And hopefully they're back to form. This one looks lovely. It, it reminds me a lot of sort of the build-up to Encanto, which opened quite early before Christmas as well and kind of had a, a slow burn to Christmas. This is called Wish. It's a Disney princess movie. She uh, wishes upon a star and the star comes down to heaven. But suddenly she learns that having all your wishes come true mightn't be the, the wonderful world that it's you think it is. Up yeah, be. it's a bit right. of the monkey's paw. I, I've I've heard one of the songs already. It's already ca- be, fathers of little girls everywhere. Be and mothers be worried. There seems to be some really catchy tunes. And I don't know if you remember a couple of years ago with Encanto, it opened and not that many people went to see it. And people went, oh, Disney have lost the touch. But once the Christmas holidays came, yeah. The people went to see it again and again and again, and suddenly the soundtrack started to ease. Notice in Spotify, yeah, the, the song right, started yeah, up yeah. on the list as well. Yeah, this looks true. like it's going to repeat the magic. So that's out November twenty fourth as well. But really, it's in the big build up for Christmas, along with Wonka, which we'll talk about next month because yeah. it's only coming out there. They they think that's going to be a massive Christmas hit too. Wish and Wonka are going to be nice to see. Um, nice to see something original again coming from Disney. Um, there's yeah. been a lot of. You know, we, the live-action remakes or the... Yeah, well, yeah. we call them live-action? I don't know. Yeah. But um, there's been a lot of that over the last yeah. three, four years. So it's nice to see a nice original what, what, story. What they've always done best is mm. take an original story or maybe take from a storybook somewhere yeah. and make a new film out of it that we haven't heard before. This is what they do. And they nail it so well when they do it. You go... Yeah. Go back to doing that. Although I think part of it is by keep it's a licensing thing. By doing a remake of these movies, they keep the rights to them for another 40, 50 year okay. boring Hollywood business yeah. stuff. But a method to the madness. We, yeah, yeah, we'll do it all, when we give it, we're given our, our movie uh, business podcast show, we'll we'll talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hint hint. So that <clears> is <throat> Wish. That is uh coming to theaters when? The twenty fourth of November. Twenty fourth yeah. of November. So two weeks, two weeks. Yeah. And you reckon instant smash, slow burner? I think slow burner because it's holidays and the the okay. m- so many people will be getting ready for Christmas and so on. And maybe they won't go to the cinema the first couple of weekends, mm. but it'll definitely run all through the Christmas holidays. Plus a lot of people before Christmas will go and see the Christmas classics, but then when it's school holidays they will go and they'll go and see this. It's definitely going to be a hit. Let's talk. Just when you mentioned Christmas mm-hmm. classics, let's talk Christmas classics. What have we got to look forward to? Well, the to? first one we're getting is a re-release of Love Actually, which is twenty years no. old. Yes. No. Well, it doesn't feel it because let's face it, we show it every year anyway. But it is yeah. the official anniversary. And I, actually, I was listening because this week the great Joni Mitchell turned eighty, and one of yeah. the one of the things. Uh, somebody was mentioning in the show was they were talking about their favourite songs and there's a great scene you forget that with all the funny jokes with all the silly bits in Love Actually Mm. one of the best bits of acting the bit where uh, Emma Thompson thinks she's going to get the necklace and she gets the Joni Mitchell CD and Joni Mitchell plays and she goes off and the person on the radio described it goes off and does the mum thing goes off for a little cry on her own and then comes back with the brave face on for the kids 
heartbreaking. Like, it's Oscar-winning act- acting in a yeah. silly, fun movie where Liam Neeson lets his kid run through security in Heathrow, which you would not do. Um, yeah, you just suspend belief just a yeah, little But with bit. that, there's suddenly these brilliant moments yeah. and some really funny jokes. And yeah, it's not perfect. And some people, the people who don't like it, really don't like it. Okay. But it is a, a very fun Christmas movie. And one of the things I, I like about it is, you know, it's all the different types of love. It's fraternal love. It's... Yeah. Uh, it's it's a uh, romantic love and all that. Plus, one of the best bits of when uh, uh, Bill Nye's character has been interviewed by Aunt Deck, and he yeah. uh, has this question: "Goes thank you, Aunt or Deck?" Which yeah. I is, is I think every time I see them on the telly, and let's face it, that's a lot. It is a lot. <clears throat> yeah, but um. Good fun. So we've got that coming up, and then a couple of weeks later, which we we'll probably talk about next month. Elf is also 20 years old. No. Thank God you were only seven when all these movies came out. Yeah, you? correct. Yeah. Yeah, well spotted. Yeah, that's... Well spotted. Yeah. <laughs> but so we've so got... Uh, Elf. Okay, so Elf. Elf is going to be there. Yeah. Elf makes a reappearance every year. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. would be out anyway, but there would just be a bit more... Uh, Jazz hands about it, yeah. and I think they're going to. They've done up the the, the copy of it slightly as well. Okay. But it, it, added an extra dinosaur. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but to be a, the, look, it's it's a Christmas classic anyway, and okay. it is one of those that doesn't age. You know, there's some things that you drag the kids to, and they go, "Daddy, I don't understand why yeah. that's funny." Yeah. And there's other ones they go, "That is hilarious, man." And Elf yeah. is, it is yeah, it's yeah, timeless. It is. It's timeless. It, yeah, it's ageless. Um, okay, so lots to look forward to next month. I keep forgetting we don't really have to cram in the Christmas stuff because you are going to be here next December. We're going to be here next December. December. Talk about. Bike riders Wonka is going to dominate, though, I think, our conversation. Okay, okay. And hopefully I'll have seen it by then. Brilliant. We will look forward to that. Collie, thank you as always. We will talk to you at the start of December. We'll have our Christmas hats on, our Christmas jumpers on. We'll be all set. All right, and that is where we wrap it up for this morning. Thanks to everyone who got in touch with the show, with the requests, dedications, suggestions for music. I will be back this way next Saturday morning. We will do it all over again uh, from 10 a.m. next Saturday morning. Paul McDevitt is up next with his Saturday Shuffle. He'll take you through for the next couple of hours. Lucy Peoples here at the top of the hour uh, with a news update for you. But for me, Rory Farrell, take care. We'll talk to you next Saturday. Take care. Bye-bye. On this week's Business Matters, I'm joined by Karen Murphy of Karen Murphy Speech, Drama and Communication. So join me, Chris Ashmore, for Business Matters on Sunday evening after the 6 o'clock news. Business Matters is also...